Greetings and so glad you have joined us. And that Bishop Latib is here with me today. He is the eighth bishop of the Diocese of Alaska, and we invite him in every once in a while so that he can just give us some of his wisdom. And we call it Bishop Bits, um, a conversation with the bishop. So I'm curious today, Bishop, about what you think about those people. You've been a chaplain, I've been a chaplain, and that's the context really where I've heard, them, heard what I'm going to say the most. And that is, well, you know, she is a believer, but she doesn't go to church. Um, she's a good person, but she doesn't go to church. But she's a Christian, but she doesn't go to church. I'm curious about what you think about that. Can you be a Christian all by yourself? Or is Christianity something that calls us to community? Both. Um, I think that, uh, by the way, good to be here, and thank you for uh, this opportunity to chat about some cool things, I think. So, um, yes, you can be a Christian alone, um, and I make no value judgment as to whether you're a good or a bad one. I mean, we know that, um, we know that there was a, a, a long history in the Christian experience of people who would actually go out into the desert um, to be hermits, you know, uh, to be ascetics, to, um, to be out there to pray. Um, and we know, I know personally, that there are moments when I am alone, uh, maybe out and experiencing just the absolute beauty of God's creation, and it makes me very much aware of the, the giftedness of life, um, and, and, and really perhaps even the wholeness of, uh, of life. And I feel very much a sense of God's presence uh, and the Spirit moving in my life. And those are holy moments. Um, so, so yes, I think that we can, we, I think people of faith can certainly have a sense of a living faith even when they are alone. I guess I should also mention that uh, some of my best prayer time is um, at about 4,000 feet above the earth and in my plane, you know, where, I'm, uh, where, where it's nice and, and, and allows for maybe a more focused uh, time. So then what is it about going to church that's important for well, that, us? Yeah, that's where, I'm, that, that's where I want to go to. And, and, and I think you mentioned it, um, just to finalize what I was saying. And we know that Jesus himself went off to be alone. But Jesus always came back to community. Um, aesthetics, hermits, they would go out to be alone, but they were there not just for their sort of, sort of own personal benefit, um, they became a source of people who could, who could grow and benefit from their spiritual development and experience and then bring that back to the community so that the community could be nurtured and nourished and grow. Um, so as Christians, we recognize that we have an individual, that individual relationship that's, that we need to make sure we take care of. But we're also called to be part of this body. You know, we are an, we are an incarnate be, meaning that we are, we recognize that God is present in the flesh, in Jesus, and that we are part of that body of Christ. And so our wholeness, our, the, the fullest sense of our spiritual expression as Christians, is found in community. And oftentimes that can be the most challenging thing now, can't it? I mean, I have to say, everything is pretty much always right and good and nice when I am at 4,000 feet um, or when I'm out viewing the beauty of creation or when I'm alone with God. Things become a lot more challenging when I have to encounter my brother and sister in Christ who may actually be somebody who's struggling with forgiveness, somebody who's struggling with reconciliation, somebody who wants to use the wrong right in the prayer book, um, somebody who wants to 
uh, stand when I think we should kneel. Um, I'm being silly, but that's part of the challenge. It's all about relationships. It's right? all about relationships, and sometimes relationships can can be our most difficult struggle. So why struggle with relationship in church? Because that's what Christ calls us to do. I mean, that, that's exactly what Jesus calls us to do. When Jesus tells us to love neighbor as we love ourselves, he's kind of setting the bar pretty high there, right, about community. That's a statement about community. I mean, if I love myself enough to say I've got to get out and spend more time away from church, uh, it's kind of hard to love your neighbor that way. Um, you know, Jesus um, being part of the body of Christ means that we need to realize that the fullest expression of God is in this community, in this messy community. Our presiding bishop talks about beloved community. Mm -hmm and talks about Jesus' way of love. Well, the way of love goes through community. And there's even um, scriptural direction for how to handle when we may be in conflict with one of the people in our community, right? And in uh, Matthew, it says if you have a, a, That's right. a disagreement with someone in, in this community, then we go to them directly, and if that doesn't work, we take someone with us and we go to the elders of the church. So there's, I, it feels to me as though there's expectation that as we work through relationships in the church that we get closer to the fuller um, knowledge of God, um, yeah. who is about love, and that beloved community that the presiding bishop talks about. It's, it's really interesting that you, you, you mentioned that. It makes me think, Betty, that if you look at our if you just look at our, our prayer books and our liturgy, every single one of them presumes community, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, baptism presumes the presence of community. Uh, and, and I think that was probably one of the most important elements of the liturgical renewal and reform that went into the new prayer book, which is now older than the old prayer book. Um, was that baptism is first and foremost how we begin this journey, and it happens in community. Um, morning prayer is written and intended to be done in community. Eucharist is a service that's intended to be done in community. Holy matrimony, matrimony, right? Matrimony is, you know, um, it's all about a community gathering to witness and bless. It's the community gathered that witnesses and blesses what the marriage couple is doing. And they give permission. And they give permission. In fact, you know, they the marriage couple is asking, if you really look at the liturgy, the marriage couple is asking the community to be involved in their relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not terribly romantic, but it's very scriptural and very much consistent with, with our theology of, 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 of what community means. Well, and if you look at the Eucharistic service, what you're saying really gets uh, made even fuller because we hear scripture and then we ask, we pray for the people around us and we ask for forgiveness and then we're given forgiveness and then we pass along the peace of Christ all so that we can be ready to take communion. And That's be right. in full communion. That's right. You know, um, in the Episcopal Church, I found that <laughs> when it comes to the peace, and I, you know, I was thinking I should probably say the peace when you introduce these videos as bishop bits. If I say the peace, then they're bits and pieces. <laughs> but I won't do that because uh, that would be corny. That would be corny. Um, <laughs> but people, I found that people either really like the peace or they're really uncomfortable about the peace. And um, and sometimes the peace in our liturgy, some people have described it sort of as the pre-coffee hour because it becomes very much a social time. And that's fine. But you mentioned it. You know, one of the important the reason the peace is there is actually because this is that time that we are supposed to proclaim our peace with one another. You know, that if, if 
somebody has something uh, against me or, or me against somebody else, we really need to get that worked out. We need to get that reconciliation work done so that we can become that beloved community gathered at the table to receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. And you know, the, the communion that I receive is the communion you receive. Mm -hmm. And again, that's all about community. It's not just some, it, it is more than, how about I put it that way? It's, 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 it is more than just some spiritual medicine for my soul. It is a connecting, a reconnecting, a remembering, a draw, a pulling together of the various members of Christ. Well, it, maybe there's another time that, you know, we can do another um, bishop fits on this, but if it's so difficult, if we haven't been able to make uh, peace with our neighbors or within ourselves, we actually have a liturgy around reconciliation. That's right. In the Book of Common Prayer, which is, again, just a way to sort of be re-immersed in the community and, and you know, accept communion again and, and be made whole. Um, and maybe that's another t another topic, but it just occurred to me as you were talking about it that we do have a variety of ways to figure out how to how to have good relationship within the church worshiping community. Oh, that's right. That's right. And um, it's funny we we people uh, oftentimes are surprised to know that even in our own book of common prayer in the Episcopal Church we do have a form of. Uh, for confession, for private confession, uh, for private confession, and and really, I think that one of the one of the outcomes of that, or maybe one of the hopes of that, is that it, it is like the scriptural reference from Matthew. It's an opportunity to go and to talk about what what, what the breach is, and then to seek some support of how to reconcile. Um, and how to restore uh, place in community. Um, and, and it's just crucial. Because mm -hmm. um, we're all broken. We're all broken, exactly. All broken. There's not a, a... I know that at any celebration of the Eucharist that I attend, there is at least one person in the congregation who is completely unworthy of being there. And, it's... and I know that because <laughs> I'm there. We are all broken, and so I think one of the gifts that we have, at least in this tradition, is that there are a number of ways that we can continue to do the hard work of reconciliation and relationship building. Yeah. And, and it is hard work, and maybe that's one of the things that keeps people, some people away, because it, 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 that's so. really tough. Mm -hmm. um, and I would just invite people to uh, to pray about about that and to pray about what um, what it is that draws you to Christ and what it is that draws you to the community of Christ and what it is that perhaps keeps you away and then invite you to offer that up to God um, and and to to stay with the struggle you know, to, to come and make it happen. It's as, as, as somebody once said, and I like it, we are diminished by your absence. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when somebody's not there, we are diminished by their absence. Well, thank you, Bishop. I appreciate you being with us again today, and we hope you'll come back and we'll, maybe we'll talk about the right of reconciliation next time. That's a good one. Yeah, we could do that. And thank you all for joining us. These will these bishop bits are put on YouTube, and we hope that you'll find them and listen again, and invite others to join you. And if, and if they bring up questions, um, or you want to explore certain oh, good topics that we've got, I know that um, Mother Betty would be more than happy to receive those. I just set you up, and I'm sorry. Oh no, but I, I offer that only because I know that I would be more than happy to. Um, engage those conversations too, but it would be far uh, more practical for folks, I think, to reach out to you mm -hmm. and to try and track me down. And if there are other topics that you want us to talk about with the bishop, we would love to hear those. You can send us an email or send us a message through Facebook or call us on the phone, uh, but let us know. We want these to be helpful.
All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. God bless you. God bless you.